Okay. Well, cannabis has got uh, many, many chemicals in it, and some are called uh, plant cannabinoids or phytocannabinoids, and uh, the number of those seems to grow or to be growing every week, month, year. Uh, the current number I've been given very recently was 105, so 105 phytocannabinoids, and in addition to that, about at least 400 other compounds as well. Certainly uh, for pharmacological interest and for potential medicines, there's one interesting one called uh, beta caryophyllin which is also in other plants. In black pepper and... Yeah, and uh, very recently um, a chap called uh, Jörg Gerd showed, showed it to, um, that it can activate CB2 receptors, cannabinoid receptors, so it's also a, can um, a cannabinoid which can activate those receptors. Uh, but it's not for people with phytocannabinoid because it's structurally quite different. So what we have are these two compounds that you mentioned, the cannabidiolic acid, which is actually the precursor of cannabidiol in the plant. So what happens is uh, the plant contains mainly cannabidiolic acid when it's big growing. Uh, if the plant is heated or stored for a long time, then the, the cannabidiolic acid gradually converts to cannabidiol. If it's heated, it happens quite quickly. Um, it's the same actually with the THE, it's formed from an acid. And so that's why people have to heat uh, cannabis if they want to get high, they have to heat it in some way to form enough THC. And the same applies to cannabidiol. Uh, we've been studying uh, both cannabidiol and cannabidiolic acid quite recently. And uh, what we found was that, uh, firstly, the cannabidiol can target receptors known as 5-HT1A receptors. And uh, they do, it, uh, cannabidiol works quite potently doing that. And what it does is to enhance the ability of uh, drugs which activate those receptors, it enhances their ability to produce an activation. And that could have a number of uh, therapeutic benefits. For example, antimorsia, to, to name but one, but there are others. Cannabidiolic acid, we discovered, to our surprise, uh, could do the same thing, but uh, much more potently uh, than cannabidiol. And also, uh, they both have what we call bell-shaped dose response curves. So very low doses, they don't do anything. Very high doses, they don't do anything in, on this receptor. But in between, you get this bell-shaped response curve and it's much broader the spell shaped response curve for cannabidiolic acid and for cannabidiol which is quite narrow. So if we want to exploit the effect on the 5-HT1A receptor then uh, probably uh, for, for that in, uh, for, a, for a potential medicine uh, cannabidiolic acid may, much, may be more what we call druggable uh, may be a better bet for a medicine than cannabidiol for that purpose. If you look at the literature, there are a number of um, things uh, which cannabidiol does, apparently by somehow acting through 5-HT1A receptors. Um, it can protect from stroke, uh, it has a protective effect in stroke, um, anxiety and anti-anxiety effect, anti-pain, um, anti-nausea as I mentioned, anti-vomiting, and there are one or two others as well, um, which uh, CBD can do probably by the 5-HT1A receptor. And spe more speculatively, it could even its anti-schizophrenic effect might uh, be through that, but that's still to be investigated. Cannabigerol. Right, cannabigerol is another uh, phytocannabinoid, and interestingly, um, it has the opposite effect to cannabidiol and cannabidiolic acid in that it blocks 5-HT1A receptors. So I sometimes uh, think to myself, we should re 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 uh, use a different spelling for phytocannabinoids, F-I-G-H-T-O, phytocannabinoids. They fight each other because they can have, very often have opposite effects. Um, so we've got cannabigerol, which is blocks 5-HT1A, and also, and this is not unusual for drugs which target 5-HT1A receptors, it can also uh, target alpha-2 adrenal receptors, uh, as, and in fact it behaves as a, a partial alpha-2 adrenal receptor agonist. Um, colleagues, of, uh, collaborators of, of mine have, have, have recently shown the fact that um, cannabigerol, by acting through alpha 2, can reduce pain. So that could be really, really interesting uh, potential use for cannabigerol for pain relief. Uh, 
5-HT1A um, blockade is interesting uh, because um, there's some evidence that if you activate 5-HT1A receptors or if you block 5-HT1A receptors, you can get the same therapeutic benefit, strangely enough. And that really reflects the very complex nature of the 5-HT1A receptor role in the brain. But you can either activate or block to um, reduce the um, what we call the, the negative signs of schizophrenia, things like effects on cognitive function and so on. They can be uh, ameliorated with drugs either which activate or which block. If everything's ready here on the dark side of the moon, play the five tones.